Um, so um, I hope everybody can see our screen. So we're now on part three, or we'll just discuss briefly the inspection procedures um, pre-border at the port and at the cold storage warehouse po. So for the pre-border and border inspection, once you are accredited or licensed, you're now eligible to apply for an SPS import clearance through the DA trade system. Uh, we would like to encourage you to get in touch with the Bureau of Animal Industry as well as go online through the Intercommerce as you need to be uh, registered dun po sa Intercommerce, you need to create an account as well as pay fees for your um, SPS IC and the processing fee through the DA trade system. Uh, once you launch an application for SPS IC, the BAE, uh, particularly the NBQSD, will review it and the director will approve it. So yung SPS IC nyo po, uh, sa ngayon, we have a temporary validity. Ang regular or um, talagang by regulation, 60 days lang po yung validity ng SPS IC nyo. Pero due to the pandemic, um, there was an issuance that until the end of the year, the SPS IC is valid um, until 90 days. So the shipment, um, kailangan po makapag-apply kayo ng SPS IC and the shipment must not, um, dapat hindi lumabas doon sa port of origin doon sa date ng SPS IC nyo. So I repeat, shipment must ship out within the SPS IC validity, not before. So if your SPS IC is not used, another SPS IC is applied. I would like to highlight on this point as there is no cancellation of SPS IC, please remind all your logistics people, yung nag-handle po ng mga PO nyo, na please be mindful kung anong SPS IC po talaga yung ginamit doon sa shipment at kung ano din po yung gagamitin ni broker kapag nag-clearan siya sa customs. Dito po kami nagkakaroon ng problema as yung mga lumang SPS IC, iba po yung ginagamit for the ERFI. So once the shipment po arrives at the Philippine port, so your broker knows this already, they will file for the IED or yung SAD. Um, the BOC will approve the entry um, and then the broker will lodge the electronic request for inspection or yung ERFI. Um, then the um, BQO will conduct the inspection at the day. Yeah. Please note on this part, dun pa lang po sa ERFI na number 7, paki make sure na po na kung sa Angkod Storage Warehouse yung siya dadalhin doon nyo lang po, yun po ang ipalagay nyo doon sa ERFI para hindi na po tayo magkakaroon ng problema uh, at magkakaroon pa ng mga delay dahil sa request for transfer. So once your shipments or containers have been cleared by the VQO at the DEA, the VQO will electronically tag the, um, the inspection, um, yung EVQ milk, and release the shipment. Please make sure, tell your brokers, um, and your logistics people to ensure na natag na po ng quarantine yung EVQ milk para po pagdating sa cold storage warehouse, hindi na po magkakaroon ng delay. So next, at the cold storage warehouse, once it arrived, um, kanina pa nina-highlight ni Sir Paul na you have to coordinate the arrival with our plant officers. Um, once um, seen ng plant officer, if you verify po yung documents, so please make sure kung ano yung dala ng driver ng truck or nung broker, parehong parehong documents yung naka-upload doon sa DA trade system dahil nasi-check na po ng plant officer natin yan. Iti-check po yung integrity ng buy seal and if it is not broken, it will magpo-conduct na po tayo ng inspection or 100% during the unloading. So nilagay po namin yung kailangan na nakalagay doon sa DA trade system as well as yung hard copy, SPS IC, wet health certificate, BL, packing list, commercial invoice, and yung OR inspection fees. Kapag po na-inspect na tayo, itatag na po sa system ng plant officer natin as inspected and passed, and the EVQ milk can now be printed. Um, so I hope that is clear po for the procedure from the port to the cold storage warehouse. 
Ito naman pong step-by-step -step procedure na to for your direct arrivals. Um, ito po yung tanong, paano kung halimbawa at the port or during transit from the port to cold storage, puno? Or for some reason, nagkaroon ng human error si broker sa pag-input ng cold storage dun sa ERFI. So our guidance for this is under NMIS Memorandum Circular Number 03-2017-005. You as an importer or your duly authorized representative have to send a request letter. May annex po na will be downloadable or you can send through email. And you will have to address this dun sa Regional Technical Operation Center na original CSW na nakalagay doon sa ERFI. You can send this um, letter of request via email to the respective um, ARTO. Once the ARTO receives it, um, they will approve the request. They will um, inform the central office MIED to modify it. And then uh, once it is being modified in the system, the MIED will uh, advise the art of concern. Okay, po. So we hope that you directly coordinate first with the art of involved. Um, as they will be the ones who are sending the letter to us that is approved by the Regional Technical Director. So I hope that is clear po for transfers of direct arrivals po. Ito naman po, kapag nandun na yung karne nyo, it has been inspected, unloaded, and stored at the cold storage warehouse. Ito naman po is how you will ask for the certificate of the inspection. So you just need to inform the um, the uh, CSW or directly the NMIS plant officer, they will do conduct um, upon, um, if applicable, the inspection, the withdrawal of the meat, and they will issue you a certificate of meat inspection. Um, uh, okay, so this um, slide contains for the minimum labeling requirements for imported meat. As most of you have known, we have reiterated that this particular provision under DAO numbers 26 series of 2005 be strictly implemented. Um, we hope na for future shipments new po coming in 2022, we'll have the complete details na po. We provided a moratorium for shipments coming in until the end of the year. Na if your um, shipments do not contain the minimum labeling requirement, you are opted not to be investigated, but directly request for your shipments to have modifications of label. So this is not a new regulation. It has been in, um, institute, uh, parang, uh, instituted since 2005. We have noted our foreign counterparts, particularly that from the U.S., Dahil sila po yung most shipments that do not contain the minimum durability best before our expiration date. Uh, so we do hope, so yung numbers one and two, um, this refers, the exporter refers to the meat establishment. So pag meron po dun yung pangalan ng meat establishment, kung saan yung nakuha, okay na po yun. Country of origin, lot identification. For lot identification, the barcode is acceptable. Product description na halagay lang po siya, diso, or pork cutting fat. Um, for the net quantity, so kailangan po na nakareflect po yung weight. We have queries regarding those in polyblocks na ang nakalagay lang na label sa isang band paper sa labas ng clean wrap. Tapos may mga polyblock na walang label or yung label wala din um, net weight. So if you are a meat importer trader that sells your polyblock retail dun sa cold storage, we highly recommend that you ask your exporters to put in the labels for polyblock so as to prevent future ano po, um, problems with this. Uh, please, please request that kung trader po kayo, ilagay po nila yung net weight per polyblock dahil binibenta nyo naman siya by polyblock, hindi naman po by pallet. Next, date of manufacture of packaging. Uh, we have informed our foreign counterparts 
we need yung date manufacturer, production date, or slaughter date. Iba pa po siya sa packaging date as was explained by our U.S. counterpart. Usually daw, three days, two days after the slaughter siya kasi rin nagpa-package. Bakit po din importante yung production date or slaughter? Dahil ito rin po ay reference kapag nag-temporary ban due to animal diseases. Halimbawa po, for beef, halimbawa nag-temporary ban sa isang country, ang reference date po nung ban is yung slaughter date. So kung wala po yung slaughter date dun sa label, paano po tayo mag-trace back kung safe pa yung karne? Then number eight, date of minimum durability. Uh, we emphasize either best before or expiration date. This has to be declared by the meat establishment for your supplier. So again, highlight on minimum durability. So huwag naman po na may makita sana kami na ang minimum durability niya is 10 years after the manufacture. Kasi ang hinihingi po natin ay minimum. Number nine, if, if makita po natin sa label handling and storage instructions such as yung keep frozen, or keep refrigerated. Uh, keep refrigerated. So yun lang po yung um, hinihingi natin. So I hope that clears po for our minimum labeling requirements. So these are samples lang po. Um, so um, we have communicated na rin po with some of you, also with the suppliers. Um, so nakita po dito, meron na po mga expiration date, pero yun pa rin pack date pa rin, walang mga production date. Uh, we take note then halimbawa, for example, yung barcode, acceptable na po yan as reference. Uh, please note, halimbawa po yung MDM, talaga po nakapackage siya individually and not really yung polyblock. Uh, we are considering yung polyblock po kung meat importer processor kayo na nakaking wrap lang. Pero kung trader po kayo, dapat po talaga individually package po yung MDM nyo for cutting fat, skin, or I think we have reports, pati pork gal ngayon naka-polyblock na po. Um, so ito po yung procedures, um, supplemental guidelines on how you will modify your labels. In essence, you just have to submit a letter um, requesting for 